Brandon Como filling in for Rob Kirkpatrick. He'll be back tomorrow. Bernadette Lee sitting across, running everything. And uh, so we are actually joined by one of the candidates uh, from last night's debate. I was not aware we had this interview scheduled, so this is a nice little surprise. (laughs) (laughs) So this is a nice little surprise as uh, U.S. Congressman John Fleming joins us on the phone line this morning. Good morning, sir. Hey, Brandon and Bernie. Uh, Great to be on with you this morning. Well, Well, thank you so much. Yes. So we have the same five questions in our series that we've been asking to all of the uh, Senate candidates. And so we want to start with the first one with you. Uh, What differentiates you from your challengers, and what would you do differently than current U.S. Senator David Vitter? Uh, Well, uh, what differentiates me from the challengers, uh, and I'll I'll drill down on the people who were on the stage last night. There were five of us. Uh, Two of them are diehard liberal Democrats, so I'm certainly different from them. As a true and proven, trusted uh, conservative someone with the most conservative voting record uh, in the Louisiana delegation or anyone running in this race. Uh, then there is uh, John Kennedy, who is a, uh, who, whose mentor was John Kerry. Uh, he endorsed John Kerry, the liberal uh, uh, Secretary of State, John Kerry, uh, who, uh, of course, has made a disaster of the Middle East. And... Uh, uh, only uh, when Louisiana became uh, conservative did he somehow decide to uh, become a Republican. Uh, and then there's Charles Bustani. Charles Bustani clearly votes with Democrats. Uh, his voting record on conservative uh, indexes and scorecards are consistently in the 55% range, whereas I'm in the 90-plus range. Uh, so I was the one true conservative there. Um, all of my discussion, all of my positions and points were that. Uh, the others were nuanced. And I'll give you a good example on uh, Congressman Bustani. Uh, I actually quoted something he had said years ago, which was that he agreed with 80% of Obamacare. And even more recently, I've heard him actually say that uh, even like Democrats are saying today that he would like to go line by line and tweak it and fix it. Uh, I frankly don't see any hope in doing that. It, it's a disastrous law. It needs to be pulled out by its roots. Uh, we need to start over and have a market-based, patient-centered law. Uh, so that's clearly the, the big difference between me and them. I'm the true conservative. They're not. Now, how about again with uh, Senator David Vitter? Is there anything that you would do differently than him? Well, uh, to be honest with you, uh, Senator Vitter has been a very strong conservative. His voting record and mine are very similar. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you elect me to take Senator Vitter's uh, position, you're going to get uh, another conservative, although my, my record is decidedly more conservative than his. But he and I, in our voting records, um, obviously are much more uh, uh, closely allied than, say, with uh, Charles Bustani and some of the others in our delegation. Congressman, uh, our second question is one that was discussed last night um, during the uh, televised debate uh, debate on LPB, and that is with the oil and gas industry and the current situation that that so many of us are in, what would you do to to be able to help out to restore jobs for the industry and for our state? Uh, Well, first of all, first of all, uh, uh, there's a number of things that could be done very quickly. Uh, that would lift our economy up and get people back to work. Number one is to, again, repeal Obamacare. It's the biggest uh, heavyweight on our economy right now. It's destroying jobs and driving up middle-class uh, out-of-pocket expenses for health care, for premiums, and for uh, you know just simply going to the doctor. I don't even need to tell you that. Everybody knows this. Even Democrats, even Bill Clinton admitted the other day, it's the craziest thing in the world, he said. Uh, but also, I would uh, roll back the steep taxes now that this administration has built up, 18 new taxes with Obamacare, a 5% to 9% increase in taxes under the fiscal cliff tax plan. It's uh, flattened our economy. What I would do is uh, go to a single um, uh, tax, uh, one bracket, uh, what we call a flat tax, simplify the tax code and make the IRS a service organization instead of a police organization. Mm-hmm. Uh, roll back the steep uh, regulations that President Obama have put it, has put into place, fix that permanently where only Congress can pass and, and approve 
regulations instead of our bureaucracy in Washington. Uh, and then to get rid of Dodd-Frank, which is killing one community bank a day in this country. Uh, it's hard for businesses to get capital. So if we free up our economy, uh, uh, investors will start investing in the economy once again. People will uh, open factories and businesses and begin to employ people. And our economy will drop from 1% GDP all the way up to 45 5% growth rate. Current U.S. Senate candidate and, uh, excuse me, current uh, U.S. representative and Senate candidate, John Fleming, is joining us here on the show. And again, we want to remind you, we're asking the uh, same questions to all of the Senate candidates. And we go now to our third question, or our third topic. Uh, what does your first month in office look like, and what will be your first order of business? Well, I hate to sound like a stuck record, but the first thing I want to do is pass the full and absolute repeal of Obamacare. And if we get President Trump, uh, that will happen, and uh, I will lead the effort as a physician and a business owner who provides health care insurance to employees. Uh, I will be right at the center, if not in the lead, uh, on that very issue. Uh, So that's what I want to do. And also I want to build a working relationship with the White House once again. Uh, So uh, I would, uh, uh, you know, work to, to... to build those uh, communications and also communications with the House of Representatives and also as a uh, uh, co-founder of the House Freedom Caucus that forced Speaker Boehner to resign, that's brought about uh, some changes in Washington. We need to do more. Uh, I would start a, a, a Senate Freedom Caucus, and uh, we would work with the House Freedom Caucus and really uh, do the people's work. With 70% of Americans today say they are unhappy with the way government's going. We want to reverse that and say 70% of people in this country are happy with the way their government functions. And what that really means is to get Washington out of your life. When we talk about some of the different topics that uh, or issues, news issues, um, race relations always tends to come up in this last year, the last two years, the last three years. Um, race and how it will play a role in how you execute your office, your thoughts? Um, well, I think we need to bring the races together. Uh, we need to bring all groups together, men and women. This president has done all he can to divide us, and at the same time he's hurt the very people that he uh, suggests to represent. Uh, African-American unemployment is the worst it's ever been. Uh People are at each other's throats constantly. Uh, uh, You've got uh, uh, people targeting our police, policemen and police women out there. First time in history I've ever been aware that's ever happened. Uh, And so we all need to come together. And first of all, we need to look at why uh, things happen, such as, you know, why does someone get hurt or killed uh, uh, when they interact with police? Uh, we need to work on community policing. We need to work on methodologies that actually work. And uh, we need to make sure to take guns away from criminals rather than uh, law-abiding American citizens. So this is something, it's not going to come from a law or government mandate. It comes from a willingness of legal officials, police forces, uh, our president, uh, to bring people together instead of dividing them. And finally, and and this has been a question that it's been very interesting to hear the answers to as we've been continuing this series through the Senate and the uh, congressional races. Congressman John Fleming, what is your biggest flaw? Well, uh, my biggest mistake that that, that I've made uh, in my life is, uh, you know, I always wanted to be a doctor. I never had any interest in business. Uh, And uh, so I, you know, I, I did my medical school training, worked my way through college and medical school, went into the Navy, uh, rose to the rank of lieutenant commander, and then after getting out of the Navy, set up my medical practice, and I go, whoops, I realize I should have gone to business school and taken some business courses. Hmm. Uh, so I had to be a quick study at that, and I worked very hard, read, read a number of books, talked with people I admired, and, and re- really became... Uh, very interested in it because, you know, opening your own small business is quintessential uh, fulfilling one's American dream to me. 
And so I decided to do that. I opened the first Subway restaurant in North Louisiana, built up to 38, and I own other business lines as well. Uh, but I had to learn that all on my own. I've never had a one day in business class, and that, I would say, is my biggest uh, mistake. I can't call it a flaw today because I've learned a lot. I think I'm much better than I was then. John Fleming has been our guest this morning, U.S. Congressman and uh, candidate for U.S. Senate. Sir, thank you so much for your time. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Take care. You too, sir.